Hello and welcome to In the Light, Growing Your Soul with me, Anna Isabel, and I am delighted to welcome back Matt Mackay. Hello, Matt. Hi, how are you, Anna? It's good to be with you. Very well, and all the happier because we finally uh, get the chance to discuss your wonderful new book called Lessons from the Afterlife, and here it is. Very beautiful cover. And I guess maybe um, for those who are unfamiliar with your work, it might be good to start with how you came to write this book. Yes, it's a it's a very bittersweet story. Uh, I lost my son uh, sixteen years ago today. Actually, uh, he was. He was murdered. He's on his way home from work and uh, some men attacked him maybe to steal his bicycle. And uh, there was a huge fight on the street. He broke away from them and uh, one of them shot him in the back. And <clears throat> I think as anyone, you know, when you love someone deeply who dies, I think this is true of anyone, you, you want to know, uh, do they still, does that soul still exist? And you also want to know, are they okay where they are? And so those those two questions were just burning for me. They were just enormously important. Uh, and I began to seek Jordan. Uh, <clears throat> I, I saw him through mediums and then a process called induced after death communication that Alan Botkin developed. We could talk about that if you want. Um, I taught him through, I sought him through uh, past life and, and between life uh, hypnosis. And uh, and finally, uh, the late Ralph Metzner, who was a specialist in after death communication, taught me how to channel. And Jordan, through channeling, started to talk to me to, to answer my deepest questions. And some of his answers were, were just blowing my mind. We're so unexpected. We're so out of, outside the realm of what I understood or uh, could even conceive of. Um, and he gave me a picture of the afterlife and our purpose in coming here to this planet. Uh, and and he was telling me things I again I could not have imagined. And so he basically wrote lessons from the afterlife to explain the purpose of the physical universe. Um, you know, why, why are these, what are these planets doing that we live on? What, 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 what's the point of that? Um, why do we come here? Um, but he also wanted to convey to people something called deep knowledge meditation, which, uh, helps us connect to our own soul knowledge, but also, uh, uh, can help us connect to spirits uh, in the afterlife. So these were all things that he wanted to do in this book, and um, uh, he set out to do it. And uh, and uh, he, uh, what always happens with him is he tells me, "Okay, we're going to do a book," and 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 then he'll outline it in about five minutes and lay out all all the all the steps, all all what all of what's going to be in it, and then over the next year or so you know fills in all all the details and the chapters and so forth which is what happened with this so aside from what feels like the wondrous miracle that you could have such a connection with your son who has passed um from this world to the point where you are channeling a book that he's basically telling you to write Aside from that wondrous miracle, I guess the question, the next question is, these are, are deep philosophical questions that are being addressed. Was he of that mind when he was here, your living, breathing, physically present son? Or has this happened since he's passed not at all he was not at all interested in the afterlife um, <clears throat> i had 
I had read um, the uh, Michael Newton book, uh, Journey of Souls, uh, while he was still living. And I remember talking to him about it, and he thought I was nuts. You know, the, the, this <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. And he would joke with me about it. And um, but here's here's the the kind of the, the reality of of, of what um, happens to us when we're born. We we go through this um, total amnesia. We arrive here having forgotten everything that we know and everything that we've ever learned really. Uh, and so we've, we've forgotten all our past lives, all the lessons of those lives. We've forgotten what the, the afterlife of the spirit world is like and what we do up there. We've forgotten that we belong to a soul group and that those relationships are, are profound and deep. Forget everything. And of course, there's a reason why we forget everything, because if we remembered all that, we wouldn't take this life seriously. And the struggles and the pain and the and the and all of the, what we and the losses, all that we go through in this life that teaches us incredibly important lessons, we wouldn't take that seriously. We just say, "Hey, you know, beam me up, Scotty. I want to go back to the spirit world. You know, enough of this." And um, so the amnesia is absolutely necessary. So Jordan has an, had amnesia for that the spirit world and the nature of the divine and all the things he's been able to teach me because. He is teaching me from the spirit world with full knowledge. So it, it, it's interesting how, you know, we arrive here uh, with, with this deep forgetting, uh, but that that's necessary for all the lessons we learn here because we have to take this place seriously. Well, it then begs the question, question if there's a reason for forgetting, why is it important that we remember who we are in the course of living. Well, <clears throat> I think what Jordan is wanting to do is is, is help. I mean, he, he's not really helping me remember my past lives or necessarily the lessons from the past lives or or you know the knowledge that I might still have uh, in the spirit world. He's not really focused on having me remember all that. He's focused on just being clear with me about what the purpose of this life is. Why? Why am I here? What do I? What do I need to do? Uh, how do I make choices? I mean, one of the things he talks a lot about is 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 what he calls the moment of choice. And every day, all day long, we're having moments of choice. Moments of choice in which usually that involve interactions with other people. And in those moments of choice, we can either act on love. Or we can act on avoidance and uh, ego and um, and and you know somehow and mo motion driven behavior and so forth. So so in all those moments of choice, we are uh, we are evolving and 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 creating our lives. And one of the things that he's he's all about is um, is learning to recognize those moments learning to bring love into those moments because that is the point of our life our point of our, the point of our life is how to love in the face of pain and all of the obstacles that a physical world presents to us so the other thing that struck me um was the 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 meaning of what you're revealing here because you're revealing that the person he was when he was physically present here is not the same as he is now. And I think that implies that there is some growth and development that has happened to him. And that's not surprising because we kind of, we're always, we're, on this journey of personal growth while we're here. But what is showing is that that personal growth continues beyond. Yes. I mean, he did some growing in his life as Jordan. Um, he has done a lot of growing as all we, as we all do in the spirit world. We're learning things there as well. In fact, he's, you know, in the middle of learning a spiritual career. We, that's one of the things we do in the spirit world is we, we learn a spiritual career. What are we going to do there when we're, when we're not incarnating? Um, and, you know, his career has to do with 
being a guide, uh, which he he's practicing with me. And um, so, yes, we're we are constantly learning. And that's why souls are created. I mean, we're all part of Jordan tells me we're all part of God. We are, you know, uh, pieces of God. And there's this paradox. We remain both individual. Jordan has his own personality. I have my own personality. I have my own experience of what I've learned. He has his own experience of what he's learned. Um, but at the same time, we're all part of collective consciousness. We are all we are all God. Um, and the reason this source or all created individual souls is to is for those souls to go into physical environments and learn things that that all could not possibly learn or know. How could no, all understand what loss is like? From the position of all, that's not possible. It's not possible to lose anything. So all has to create souls to go into a physical world to learn what loss feels like. Loss, uh, all doesn't understand pain. I understand how pain influences or affects us. He has to create, they have to create individual souls to go into the physical world to understand pain and how it affects us and to learn how the meaning of pain and the, and the lessons that come from pain. So we are an important part of the evolution of God, of all. God is continuing to evolve. God, God isn't perfect. And unlike what I learned when I was growing up as a Catholic, little Catholic boy, um, God isn't perfect. God hasn't always existed. God um, is evolving and growing. And one of the way, main ways that God evolves and grows is through what souls are learning. So Jordan says one way you can think about, you know, the purpose of souls is to think about bees in a high. So the, the, the bees are the, the individual souls and they go out and collect honey. What, what we're going out and collecting is knowledge and wisdom and, 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 and growth. And, and, we, and we go and collect that and we bring that back to all. And all incorporates all of what we've learned and it becomes part of God. And so that's our job. That's our purpose to go out and learn and bring what we learn back to all that becomes part of all. For many, the concept that all or God might be imperfect could be very frightening. Yes, and it's... Um, it's it it goes beyond that. I mean, it's um, you know we were used to thinking of of a god as a sort of a puppet master that pulls strings and can make you know you know you know imp impact and influence uh, events around us and you know re restore our health if we're sick, bring rain if if there's a drought and so forth. That God is going to is going to influence the physical environment and and Jordan says that's really not true. Uh, God can provide guidance, but God just sort of sets things in motion. And then we come into a physical world and we experience all of its effects. Uh, and God isn't necessarily changing anything. God set it on in motion, all set it in motion, and we come and experience it and learn from it uh, in, in moment to moment in our lives. Um, so um, we are learning. God is learning and growing through us. Another thing is God doesn't need praise, doesn't need devotion. All of that is, according to Jordan, just, just not true. Um, and uh, God, here's another thing. God doesn't judge us. Uh, you know, I grew up in a, in, a, in a religion that the whole point of coming here was to prove yourself worthy uh, to, to enter heaven. And if you fail, you go to hell. And God creates, is, a, is a judge and, and evaluates and decides whether you're worthy of heaven or not. None of that is true at all. Uh, God does not judge. Um, and God, like us, is just growing and evolving and becoming. And that's all that's happening. There's perhaps a contrast in language because when people think of God, there is a certain concept attached to that. But when we're talking about 
the all and oneness. Now the concept that we could all be evolving together makes more sense because we are not looking for a the ultimate authority which means that there isn't an ultimate authority who has decided to create what we experience as painful and evil there is an all that has an impulse to materialize in the physical world in a myriad of different ways. And basically what that means is that we're all figuring this out together. So these are very contrasting concepts and that's where language becomes important, I think, because the concepts are very distinct. Yeah. And that's so important what you just said to me. We're all figuring this out together. We're all in this together. And we are all together as we figure this out. And um, and so God creates God all, collective consciousness, whatever we want to call the divine, uh, you know, creates a universe, sets planets in motion, sets events in motion and the laws of cause and effect, but doesn't necessarily try to influence any of that. The, the, God is not changing the course or direction of the planets or the stars. God sets it in motion. Uh, the, each planet evolves in certain ways. And, and when finally the species on that planet evolve to a level of awareness and, and uh, the ability to conceptualize, um, God may arrange to, for souls to enter into those bodies and to begin learning and experiencing there. And, and all of that for the purpose of growth and development. So you actually mentioned uh, Dr. Michael Newton's book, which I have read and I also have studied past life regression um, in his school. And so I'm a past life regressionist, but I was just wondering, is there a contrast of views or do the views that Jordan is bringing to you um, blend with the views that Dr. Michael Newton um, wrote about that people are experiencing in the life between life stage um, in regression? So Michael Newton uh, did, discovered accidentally the life between life hypnotic regression and um, he did it with 7,000 people before he wrote any books or before any of these people knew what to expect. And he didn't prompt them and, and, and tell them what to expect. But as you know, what, what, what happened is that they all reported unbelievably similar experiences in the afterlife, uh, you know, amazingly so. Uh, and so, uh, the fact that all of these 7,000 people are sort of confirming this is what the afterlife looks like uh, is a very powerful, in my view, scientific evidence uh, uh, for, for what, what's up there. Um, Jordan's description of the afterlife is, uh, I mean, it's, I, I think in some ways it's richer than uh, what we get from Michael Newton because these are all just, you know, relatively brief um, uh you know, uh, opportunities for people to stare into that that moment or that place, um, whereas Jordan has described it in great detail. And but it's very consistent with what Newton describes. It's very consistent with what a lot of mediums are learning when they talk to souls on the other side. So, I mean, in some ways, you know, one we can think about you know this ultimate truth or greater reality, whatever we want to call it as like the hub of a, of a wheel. And we are all looking down spokes of the wheel from different uh, parts of the uh, circumference of the wheel. And, and, we're, and we're staring down these spokes, 
each one different, but we're staring at something that's the same. And um, so uh, the mediums are, are getting their messages and, and often very consistent with what Jordan says. Jordan's getting his messages. There are other, there are other souls that communicate uh, and, and give their messages. And there's a lot of commonality across all of this so that we can begin to have some confidence that uh, the messages we're getting from these many sources, including Jordan, are pointing to something very real. And uh, yeah. and we can add to that those who have uh, near-death experiences, of course, um, which also seem to, it, it, there's a, a corroboration that's happening um, from different sources so the reason I, I thought of Michael Newton, not just because you mentioned him, but because in those accounts, the element of free will is huge in terms of the choice to incarnate and the, the kinds of experiences that a soul chooses and then the detail of being born into specific families, which I think would involve certain bloodlines also um, and, and cultures in order to have particular experiences. So it seems to me that if there is a coordinator that we might call the one or God, that based on what you're saying, it tallies with everything else whereby the role of the one or god is to set up the framework and then we choose what to do with it that's to me that's exactly right that's what jordan says that god sets everything in motion sets up the framework and then we enter it and then we have all these choices how do we respond uh you know we're, we just what you said we we come into a certain time an era a certain culture uh, there are certain crises that are often going on during during a, a particular lifetime there are certain family dynamics we, we enter a certain body with its own tendencies um and and so so we enter a, a moment in time where there are all these challenges and typically with the help of guides we've chosen a particular life uh, because it offers challenges uh, that are consistent with what we are trying to learn at this particular point in our souls of evolution and development. So we're choosing lives that will offer us uh, opportunities to make choices, to face uh, various kinds of adversity, um, and then uh, grow from that. Uh, so we, we come with a lesson plan and the life that we are going to live is set up to help us um, actualize that lesson plan. You mentioned uh, very close to the top of this uh, conversation that the purpose is to, to love and to learn to respond with love. But, and also that the all is wanting to experience the thing is that the experience that we have isn't always conducive to easy love responses. So we do have a tremendous amount of anger and hatred and destruction in our world. And I think with some justification, people would call it evil because the intention, the intention behind much is to harm. So I guess the question that often plays in my mind is if the source is love and the aim is to learn to love in adversity, where is this negativity or where is this darkness originating okay, it's that's, within us yeah it's such a wonderful question well first of all let me be kind of if i could be just a little bit circumspect and roundabout about this 
the, the particular planet we're on is known as one of the most difficult places to incarnate. And Michael Newton has confirmed that. Jordan confirms that. This is a very hard place to, to live and to, and to grow. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's definitely an acquired taste. And what the main reason for that is that is the human body. The human body is beset by desire, by intense emotionality. Our limbic system drives us to engage in, in strong emotional reactions. Uh, we have um, a, a, a brain that is very self-focused, uh, all about survival, all about ego, and and um, so highly emotional, highly impulsive. Um, and it takes souls and sometimes many incarnations to learn to actually manage the human body. Uh, and it's driving us to do uh, incredibly selfish, self-focused and dangerous and hurtful things many times. You know, just anger itself, you know, the, the, the anger produces uh, a strong impulse to do damage, uh, to hurt. Uh, and and so this is the body that we we enter and it's ex extraordinarily challenging um and and this body um creates impulses that actually are the source of what you're calling evil it's it's just self-focused ego ego uh, uh ego-based uh impulses uh that do a lot of damage um and it takes us a long time to learn how to both tame the body and also how to, how to fix, stay focused on love in the face of all of these impulses and, and emotions. Okay, so now it's a difficult place. And and why, why would a soul come here uh, and leave the afterlife, which is full of love, and come here? And, and the answer, according to what Jordan says, is that in the afterlife, love is unearned. It's just there. It's, we're surrounded by love. We don't create love. We don't. We don't engage in, in in behaviors that are 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 about love because it's just all around. There's no choice. That's that's. It's like the air that we breathe, and so we don't actually learn how to create love in that environment because love is just there. It's all around us, and so we have to come here to this very difficult place to learn how to create love. Um. And 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 to, and to be able to choose love, there's no you don't choose love in the afterlife. It's just that's what you do. You behave with with love and you experience love. And here we have to choose love, and and that comes back to what we were talking about moments of choice all through the day. We're choosing whether to act on love or those or those body impulses we talked about, those emotions we talked about um, that could that can lead us to do things that are incredibly hurtful and what we might even call evil. So that's what we come here to do, to learn how to love in a way that we cannot possibly learn in the afterlife, in the spirit world. In, a, in essence, unconditional love is easy when you are in a state of love. And coming into a world where we have a limbic system and an amygdala, which is fight, flight, freeze in the face of danger, it now becomes a challenge to love and love unconditionally. So yes, all the nervous system is set up to is to is set up to avoid and run or to attack. And and we have to somehow fight against all of all of those innate tendencies in order to choose love in the face of any kind of challenge or adversity yes that that that's exactly right because and this is where remembering that we are more than the physical becomes important because the point is to be spirit incarnate so to recall that we are more than the the physical so that we can be in that state of love and some might call grace um irrespective of what happens that is the challenge folks right 
<laughs> that's my understanding. That's what Jordan has been very clear with me. I, we don't have to remember everything we know uh, in the spirit world, but what, what we are trying to remember and get clear about is why we're here. What is our purpose? Um, and, 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 and to find that guiding principle of love uh, as, as, as a, as something uh, sort of a beacon to, to draw us forward and to, to explain to us what the point of our life is. So you mentioned also that he's very keen to teach uh, deep knowledge meditation. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so deep knowledge meditation is just a, is a, it's a very simple technique. It has to do with starting with a, you know, a, a breath based meditation, or a positive meditation, just focused meditation. Let's just observe the breath. Um, and, um, like all breath meditations, uh, you just start to, you bring your attention down to your diaphragm, down to the, the seat of breath and life, notice it, observe it, and then, and then note it, you know, just typically just note, you know, in on the in breath and out on the in breath, saying it to yourself in, out, in, so forth. And when thoughts arise, as soon as possible, notice the thought and bring attention back to the breath. So uh, focus breath, breath meditation is just those three things. Attention down to, to, the, to the breath itself, noting the in and out of the breath, and when thoughts arise, go back to the breath. So that's, that's and that creates an altered state. That, that, that sets up uh, the beginning of, uh, of deep knowledge meditation. Part of it also then is an intention. Who do I want to communicate with on the other side? Do I want to communicate with my own eternal soul, uh, my higher self? I can, I can, I can do, I, I can set up deep knowledge meditation to talk to myself, the part of me that still always resides in the afterlife, always is in the spirit world, and has a lot of wisdom and, and knowledge that I have forgotten when I came here. So I can direct my attention to my own soul and ask questions. I can also direct attention to loved ones who have passed, who I feel connected to, who I feel offer have the potential of offer guidance and, and support. Uh, or I can actually send my messages to the divine. Uh, so, so the part of you know this kind of communication or uh, meditation is just figuring out the address. Where am where am I sending these? Um, spiritual letters, so to speak, and these questions uh, to myself, my higher self, to souls that I know, to to my own guides, to or to the divine. So it's it's kind of figuring that out uh, as, as part of of the meditation and the, the the deep knowledge meditation. Where what's the address? The other thing that we want to figure out is what's my question. What what do I want to know? I may have several questions, but I already have one really burning question that I, I want to get some sort of answer to. Okay. So now uh, we enter the, this altered state, this meditative state with, with those two intentions. One, I, I, I know who I want to communicate to. And two, I know at least one question that I want to ask. After you enter a receptive state, which is kind of, a subjective you know experience you know what what is this what is this a uh, receptive state for me it's just it's just sensing jordan's presence um uh, feeling the the love and connection between us um and and sort of um and you know, and just just aware of um the channel opening up uh between us and 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 it's a pretty simple place. It's 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 a place where uh, I I just feel his presence. The channel is opening, and w as that happens, I feel ready then to ask the question. Now, if you want to do actual channeling, you can write the question down and then physically write write the answer that you get that you receive. Um, but you can also just send the question uh, uh, through the channel and wait until. Um, 
thoughts begin to show up for you and uh, and the answer will come and the answer can come in many different forms that, this is something else i think that some, sometimes people get confused like they think uh, you know it's just going to be you know maybe you know like the voice of god coming down and saying you know here's what's uh, the truth you know and it actually instead it's 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 a thought in tar- inside of our own mind uh, that's being planted by and sent tele- telepathically by um whoever we're communicating to our souls in the afterlife guides our higher self whoever we're communicating is telepathically sending message to us and the message can be in words it can be in actually just images pictures the messages can be in the form of a download um where you you get knowledge and then you have to find the words to kind of make sense of or or shape that knowledge into something verbal um sometimes it just comes as one one or two words that are very pithy and uh, intensely meaningful so that so that the answer can show up in different forms sometimes it even comes in the form of music um or or just sounds um so i i guess i'm i'm wanting to encourage people to be really kind of flexible about how they receive uh the messages and those opportunities to get a little bit of truth via, uh, you know, deep knowledge meditation. But if you if you do a, a simple voice, uh, you know, uh, 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 breath based meditation, you know who you're sending the message to. You have a question. Almost invariably, you will get an answer. I, I teach a class on spirituality and psychotherapy and uh, how to merge them, and uh, and I teach you know this kind of meditation to and 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 it's universally the favorite meditation of all the things that we teach in the class because it connects people to a higher source to 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 knowledge and wisdom at a level that we don't have because we forget everything when we come here uh and it's in some ways it's very deeply reassuring because people actually feel like they they're getting help and support uh, that isn't available to them ordinarily. So it can, it can be very powerful. It certainly is very powerful um, for those who are practicing. That sense of connection is is huge um, because so often we can feel very alone, especially when we're feeling um, troubled. So this book is a wonderful um, guide to help us make sense of the complex and confusing times which we go through um, as human beings and a reminder to all the title is lessons from the afterlife and i'll be putting a link to it in the description box Um, and if people want to find you and learn more about your work how do they do that well you can um learn a little bit more about and Jordan has, has quite a bit of writing on a, a website called seekingjordan.com and you can experience a little bit more there and, and we keep adding things uh, periodically to that website so that uh, if you want to have more you know from Jordan on lots of different topics that's a, that's a place you can go. well I I think we could talk for hours so I am extremely grateful for the time we have had um, and I'll be sure to make sure that, that to help everyone um, find you easily and find the book with the links. Uh, do remember to check them in the description box. Um, Matt, thank you so much for your time again. Thank you so much. And I just really appreciate the wonderful question, wonderful conversation. Thank you very much. And thank you all for watching. Next time, we're going to be looking at mental health and homeopathy. Until then, goodbye.